It's Easter weekend and I set out on an early season overnighter. It was a rare opportunity where the ice was out early but the temperatures were still cold enough to use my hot tent. Come along with me as I paddle to an island, cook up some good meals, and enjoy a night spent out in the woods alone. Well, I wasn't expecting the road to be closed, so we are going to have to walk the canoe all the way down to those trees. The sign states no camping, except for island campers, so that is definitely where I'm headed. Other than this super long road that I have to portage everything in on, it's really beautiful here. It's very mountainous. Look around. I don't know if it shows up on camera. There you go. And that is some serious cattail fluff. I wish I could grab that. Nope. Okay, well this is it. Time to set off on our first adventure of the new year. So I am out canoe camping for the first time in 2021. Uh, it is good Saturday, as I'm gonna call it, the day before Easter. Um, at least I don't think that's called good Saturday. Pretty sure it's not. Great Saturday, maybe? <laughs> anyway, I'm out on the Conowango Creek. I'm at the New York, Pennsylvania borderline. My plan is to paddle to an island campsite. So I've never been here before. This is a new place for me to adventure and explore. I'm excited to just be out and enjoy a night camping in the woods. I'm out alone. I brought my hot tent and it should be a fun time. Oh, hello. So I've got the new GoPro Hero 9 on the Smotry mount. I absolutely love this mount. It works perfect. It gives the perfect angle for the front of the canoe. You got a lot to learn on the GoPro, but it's been fun to use. The quality, the picture is just crystal clear. Not gonna lie, it is a little nerve wracking doing that, but cool. Okay, well the sun has made an appearance, which is nice. Feels amazing. I'm gonna quit messing around with my cameras and get up to my island campsite. So I'm still looking for it. Haven't come up across it yet, but I should be there pretty soon. I believe this Conowango Creek only has one lean-to campsite. I don't plan on staying in the lean-to. I did bring my hot tent. Um, it's just the right time of year. The ice is just off the water and it's still cold enough at night where it'd be fun to use the hot tent. So that's what I'm gonna do. You can see an old chimney right off the shore here. Okay, we made it. Can't wait to get up there and check it out. She is sketch city right here at the landing. The mud is like ice. <laughs> I can barely move, I've been stuck here for about a minute. Uh, all fun, all fun. I can figure out how to get up here. 
<laughs> Listen, I know a little mud never hurt anybody, but holy cow, check this out. <laughs> I can barely move. It's like quicksand, but slippery as ice. I've been standing here for at least five minutes trying to get up this hill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> almost bit it. <laughs> oh yeah, I made it. That took a little bit. It was worth the effort. It's funny, so I'm taking sticks and just throwing them down in the mud so I can use them as traction. So there's my boat down by the water. I can't wait to chill out and have dinner here on this bench. It's just dead quiet. There's definitely nobody else around. This is the first overnighter that I'll do solo in 2021. Um, I planned on doing some fishing. I really definitely wanted to fish, but I ended up having to do a portage back and forth three times on the way in because the road was closed. So, uh, change of plans a little bit, but I'm out camping and I'm happy and let's have some fun. So I was able to fit the majority of my gear in a 55 liter earth pack dry bag and my clothes are in this 10 liter gecko brands. I ended up bringing a layer of thermals because it's supposed to get down into the low thirties tonight. Then I also have a rain jacket and a down jacket, which I'm going to put on right now because even though the sun's out, it is chilly. Yeah, I will not be putting my tent anywhere near this. Look how that is hung up. <laughs> I'll get a closer look for you. That is insane. It's right in the crotch of this tree. And that is a huge tree. I was gonna put my tent right over where my boat is, but that's kind of in the direct path of that tree. There's kind of no other flat spots here, so I might end up moving that picnic table and camping right in front of the lean-to. Which, that might be frowned upon, but I will put the picnic table back. It's not worth my life to risk it with this tree here. No thanks. Bam, look at that. Baby got back. My anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hun. That's plenty for little old me. Okay, so I cleared the spot for my tent. It is a little soupy, she's pretty muddy. Not nearly as bad as down there, but um, it'll be a cool spot. It's gonna be a great view tonight. I'm happy with it, and I will definitely put the picnic table right back where it was tomorrow. Okay, update time, it's been a while. So it's around five o'clock right now and skies are looking a little gray. It's gotten really calm. So I'm wondering if it's the calm before the storm. Either way, a rainstorm sounds fun to me, so bring it on if so.
Okay, so my tent's all set up, my firewood's all processed, time for dinner. So what do you guys think? Should I make it in the twig stove? Or should I just make it right on the stove? I'm thinking I'm gonna do that. I've got my firewood all processed. I don't have a ton of firewood, I don't need it. It's gonna be low to mid 30s tonight. I will keep warm in my sleeping bag, so not a big deal. So I'm thinking if I'm gonna start the stove, might as well make my chili on it. There's nobody here. There's no sound to be had. The only thing I miss is there's no wildlife. I haven't hardly seen a goose or a bird or anything, but man, what a scene. Just absolutely beautiful here. Get out and do this. If you don't, you're missing out. Get out and do this. To my friends who watch this, come with me. Come with me and do this for sure. Super, super glad I came. I'm sure I've already mentioned it more than once, but I am doing dehydrated chili for dinner. This is chili con carne that I dehydrated back in January. I do have a video of it on my channel if you're interested in knowing how to make it. It's my grandmother's recipe and it's really good. So I've had a lot of people ask me how much water I put in when I'm rehydrating my chili and honestly, I just eyeball it. But if you must know how much, I would say that much but you do it however you see fit personally I like to just boil the water first then put the chili in it and let it dehydrate for about 20 minutes and I'll let that sit check out camp Uh-oh, that might have been a little much on the water. We'll give her 20 minutes and see how it stands. At least show you guys the front of camp. Again, this is Konawango Creek. Cool little sign, island camp. Pretty swampy across the way. I think you can camp on that island as well. There's two islands here. That's the view from the bench and camp. Cool, ain't too. No littering. Okay, come on, what movie's that from? Littering and, littering and. Okay, moment of truth on the chili. Hey, that's not too bad. Mm, it's a little soupy. So do what I did, just a little less. Bingo. I don't actually think that's half bad. That's kind of how I like it. So maybe I'll let it sit for a few more minutes. I don't know if it's been 20 yet, so yeah, not too shabby. That's good. Tell if that's rain or snow. I think it's snow. Nice. <laughs> so I'm sitting under the lean tube because it is hailing at the moment. I was wondering what it was hitting the table, and that's what it was. Hail. Hallelujah, some weather. Maybe I'll see some animals next. Well, the peepers are off in the distance. It's nice to hear them. The darker it gets, it looks way lighter on camera than it really is. It's almost dark. 
the more inviting that fire looks. So I'm going to get in there soon, watch a movie or something, just chill out. I failed to mention how the Hydropack Flux bottle, when lit up underneath, is a nice little ambient nightlight in your tent. This thing's actually pretty sweet. It puts out a lot of light, you'd be surprised. And it looks super cool. Anywho, I'm just going to hang out, watch a movie, enjoy my fire inside my tent. And uh, in the morning, we'll get up and make an epic breakfast, I promise. So thanks for coming along so far. I hope you'll stick with me. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I love canoe camping. There's just nothing like being out here. There's solitude, and it's just such a reset from life. Um, I need this more often than than I thought I did. So this is a uh, this is good. And when it came time to go to college, I picked the farthest one from home I could find. This, of course, drove. Good morning. The fire went out overnight. I did not restoke it after about 2 a.m. And uh, got quite a bit of wood left. We're going to get this thing rocking again and get breakfast on. So I just fill her up full of kindling, use one of these tumbleweeds, light it. Within minutes, it should be warm in here again. Get your priorities right, people. Gotta have that coffee. Okay, so I've gotten a lot of questions on this uh, GSI coffee press. I know a lot of people are into this. All of us like coffee in the backcountry, I'm sure. So let me show you guys how I use it. I use it a little bit differently than most people do. So I think what most people do is they just put the coffee grounds in the bottom of the container. They boil their water, and then they pour the water in, let the coffee steep for a few minutes, and then push down the uh, pressure vacuum container what i do is um i just boil the coffee so i think it tastes better i just like it this way so what i'll do is boil the coffee throw it in here and then still use the press to push the grounds to the bottom the nice thing about doing it that way too is that i don't have to wait for it to steep so i'm gonna go ahead and pour everything in here show you guys on camera you could drink it right out of the container the grounds typically just stay at the bottom like there's no grounds in this at all now there's probably some. They're all still in the pot. But any that did get in there, I can just go ahead, stick this thing in, push down. And voila, there's a mesh screen in there and any coffee grounds will be held in the bottom. So I'm being serenaded by all types of birds this morning. They're just all around me.
While my bacon cooks up, let me show you guys how I brought my syrup and my eggs. So my wife has these little perfect portion Tupperware containers. So what I did, I'm always nervous about spilling them in my bag, right? So you put something liquid in your bag, you don't want to spill it. Well, these nest inside each other. So if I can get this open, <laughs> I put one inside the other. So if it spills, it spills in the other container. Genius. Well, that one's a little overdone. That's okay. I am the world's worst pancake maker. <laughs> okay, so I introduced to you the McGriddo. It's like a McDonald's McGriddle, only you eat it like a taco. So burrito style, pancake, egg, bacon, and pure maple syrup. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm so ready to dive into this. Awesome. Sloppy. And I forgot a plate. And it's hot. <laughs> very sloppy. And very hot. I gotta wait a minute. <laughs> Grito, eat your heart out. That's tasty, you guys. That's good. Well, it's true, I don't make the world's best pancakes, but this was super good. Oh yeah, don't talk with your mouth full. might mean trouble. <laughs> well, I tell you what, 
it's a lot warmer today. Just made the first trip to the car, brought all my gear, everything but my boat. So I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, this is definitely more in my style, what I wanna get out and do, canoe camping. Um, it's Easter morning, so obviously this video won't come out anywhere near Easter, but happy Easter to everybody. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, I hope that you'll subscribe, like, and leave me a comment below. I will see you guys in the next one.